How you doing everyone? Mr. Wilson. This is Rich Wilson. Never been on this channel before, no, have you? No, not yet. Rich is a new fish angler and son of baits. So I've got to get that in because he's wearing a Preston t-shirt. <laughs> <This> is... <laughs> I haven't changed, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is not an exclusive. Basically, we are on, well, we're just coming to the Channel Tunnel. We're actually on our way over now to Belgium for the World Championships, the World Feeder Championships. Um, looking forward to it, mate, you? Yeah, we're all bad stuff. Look at that, money can't buy those. Um, and the main reason for this kind of upload is just, we've, we've been chatting about Tamar. Yeah. Richard was third overall, well done again, mate. Third overall in the Feeder Masters final last weekend. Well drawn, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as easy as that. It's not as easy as we know that. Um, and as always, we've been getting asked, well, I've been getting asked, I'm sure Richard has as well, about how did you fish it? Um, what kind of mix did you use? Yeah. Well, you, you get asked a million questions, don't you? Especially from people who who don't really fish the competition. They're thinking yeah. about trying to get tickets for next year. What's the final like? And all that sort of stuff. And, and as you know, uh, I think Richard's like this as well when people speak to him one to one and that is that I think it's just really nice to be honest with people about what they're letting themselves in for yeah people think it's your questions are how far did you cast how much have you fed you know what ground weight did you use they're the tiny little things that yeah they're not exactly the be all and end all of you've got to fish at 20 meters or you've got to fish because every peg is different on there it yeah. helped me I think not seeing it because I took it as face value and plumbed my peg, took it, yeah, I've never, to get, I yeah. haven't seen. He had to get it in there that he no, came third on his first visit. I haven't seen the venue before, so I, I'm not in a preconception of got to fish 12 metres or you got to fish you 8 metres. You were working meters. it out. Yes, I, I did. First time. I felt I did my own thing. Yeah, yeah. Because water was so low, I was in a depth that people hadn't fished before. We'd got to bottom at reservoir yeah, and yeah. then it was sort of flat so your distances could yeah. I felt increase and so it's hard to answer someone when they go how far did you fish out because one peg were full depth at six meters yeah next day were full depth at 25 meters so was, yeah each peg's different a lot of you know that the water levels uh, at Tamar have been up well they still are currently down and when you're talking about counts because a lot of people talk about counts now because we've been at it years talking about it basically I think what was the maximum count you had four and a half yes just over four Four and a half seconds, is that with the 30 gram bomb, an ounce? Yeah, ounce bomb. Ounce bomb. Everything's done with an ounce for me. I think on the practice day, I sat down and practiced with Dean Barlow on Thursday. I think the maximum count I had was a, just under five or thereabouts, but in comparison to previous years, you've normally got about, you could get eight, nine. So that that's giving you an idea of how different it was this year. Um, but one of the things I want to mention is that, some, I mean, I, I spoke about this briefly. Uh, we've chatted about it on our way down here and I, I, I want to know what Richard's thoughts are about ground weights all right it's a massive minefield as we all know and certainly newcomers to the sport it, you walk in a tattle shop and it's like oh, yeah what do I do here look at this lot how do I how do I pick a ground bait especially for a venue that you might not know now um, I think if you're watching this in England you're pretty confident in anything that's a fish meal mix all right now i'm not going to over complicate it because i just want to kind of i want to hear what richard's going to say about it but basically i had two different days on day one of the feeder masters final i caught 60 skimmers that was it you know about five roach and that was it 60 skimmers so it's all about skimmers but then on day two i it, it wasn't about skimmers i caught i think i caught three about that big and i was in an area where there were more roach so i had 80 odd roach and 30 perch right I use the same mix both days. Yeah. Now that kind of blows a few people's mind because they're like thinking, well, hold on a minute, don't I need a mix for skimmers and bream? But then if I draw on roach, I need to yeah. change my mix. Now, you can do what you want with that, but that's a fact. I use the same mix both days, which was F1 green, brilliant mix. I've caught loads of fish on that recently and all last year. What, what, what are your thoughts? Rich used to fish with Barnsley Blacks not long ago, before he was a family man like he is now and growing beards and things. Um, so Richard knows a lot about ground baits and I'm just curious to hear, what, I mean, what, what's your thought process with ground baits? This year has been a little bit of change, so was, I were an F1 black man. Was you? And I liked a bit of green to colour it up. I, is that went, all year round? Yeah, as a base mix, as part of my, I liked a F1 dark. Yep. As part of my base mix, just, that when we go to half of it, third of it, a quarter of it, just that went in first. I used to put some green in when they were colouring water, put some green F1 in. Okay. 
I have started to use green this year for one thing or another and just because that's what we can get hold of and there's it's been a little bit of a shortage of black and yeah it's just a whatever it is the pellet that I can't get hold of or the change of the dye or the color i love green now <laughs> <laughs> right so i've gone from right, right. oh i want to use a dark one so now i want to use a bright green one right and then, the amount of fish i've caught haven't changed right but i'm now confident on that but i was confident on that before so is it more of a confidence thing than a you're on the right mix how, how much how much thought and i mean i've spoke to um former world champions about this recently and two of them and they both think it might be a bit of nonsense but i'm curious to think what your um your opinion is on what are your thoughts on strength of fish meal so strength of mix my a lot of people like thatchers to strengthen their mix up i like um the 50 50 green because it's got yep. it's a bit coarser okay yeah. so i like to strengthen my mix up with a 50 50 green but mainly because of the coarse the coarse crushed pellet in it yeah it's a bit, little bit coarser so i feel i'm strengthening my mix up with that but i'm also adding a little bit more feed content so the stronger it is yeah i'm incorporating feeding a little bit more in my ground bit not loose feed as in right. what is in my gram the particles so you're partnering the strength yeah but with, but with yeah. more feed so as when well. i want more strength yeah I, obviously it's because i want to attract the fish but i want to keep them longer by the meat in the particles got you if you can get them eating the particles yeah i've done both jobs i've brought them in yeah i've got them grazing and yep. it's my job to figure out how to catch them and that's a good one i like that yeah i like how you combine whereas them the when i use the thatchers it's a bit finer a bit fluffier it's it's as strong, yeah, maybe stronger, um, but it hasn't got the little gritty particle, yeah, the yeah, grain, yeah, yeah, yeah. the grains. That's and interesting, right? It's just how the different pellets go through the mill, and some pellets crush mm. to dust, some crush into quote, you know, little yeah, bits, yeah. and whatever size pellet we're putting mill to make that right ground bait. And that's interesting. But there's something I'm. It's a massive thing, confidence in. Yeah, I've got little base mixers. What I got to, I like. Um, match method dark yeah and um, that's got some particle then some little particles in as well and it what are your thoughts on sieving bits out of mixes so do you do that i sieve every bit of ground bait i'm going to use not to what, take dry, it out dry yeah just before i use it yeah because i want to look what's in it it might go straight back in even if this is a mix that you know the mix i know so it's... you like f1 green yeah and if you open don't the get me now. wrong Two different batches can be different because yep. it's the it's not the mill or the grinder it's the pellet that is provided and if a pellet is more crumbly or harder it comes out yeah bigger lumps finer so i sieve it little flour sieve just stick a pint through see how much good through flour sieve and how much is left in yeah it, half the time it'll go back in its summer but i know there was a eighth of a pint of that is eatable oh yeah as in yeah yeah, yeah. pellet and then so I just know in winter I'm going to take that out and maybe leave it out. Might introduce it halfway through. But I like to just know exactly what's in the mix. Because some people, I think, they're fishing with ground bait and they don't really know what's in it. And if you sieve, say, 50-50 green, half it won't go through sieve. Yeah. So they're having cast after cast or putting a big pot in and think they're feeding nothing. But really, it's equivalent to going like that with the micros. They're cupping them down edge and then putting one little yeah they might put an expander on top or a little piece of worm and think can't get a bite yeah but it's equivalent to just doing that with some micros and then trying to catch it same with feeder fishing yeah 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 um, i mean that's something that i used to get asked a lot about when i did the um uh buyer's guide ground bait series which i've done for a long time well, that's the kind of thing you know just things like that well go on then on the final notice we are moving now the train is actually on its way now yeah. so we'll be in france shortly um what uh, you've touched on this briefly i just want to ask you before we go what are your thoughts on color color um do you, do you like a, a do you dog can you mix down in clearer water i do or I have. have you experimented i carry a black powder dye wherever i go so if you do go down the green route yep. at any point i can make that darker darker yep um i like i like dark in winter but i also like to look if there's a tinge of water yeah i've got to put some green in but okay. to make it just look a deep dark green confidence um i feel right. it's just um 
uh, whether it gives them that little bit more visual to feed over the area yeah. or yeah. it settles them better. Um, I've got to ask you this because I've been asked this. When do you add the dye? When do I add the dye? Do you add it to the dry mix before you start adding water and mixing or do you add it after? Have you got any so, preference? I'll so I've been asked this a few times. It's hard with a dye because it dyes different ground mix different. So I'll add a little bit dry, then I'll add a little bit more when it's wet. <laughs> I thought it would be a straightforward answer that. No, one. <laughs> it's not like I, it's not like I put a teaspoon in before. Yeah. Because sometimes some ground mix you put a teaspoon in and you look, you think, do you want it that black? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just I put a tiny little bit in to start off where you mix it down. Yeah. And then I will add a tiny little bit and just get it to where I want it. Right. Go on then, final question. Get asked about this all the time. A lot of it's confidence. Do you ever mix your mix the night before? Or are mm. you on the morning, man? I'm on the bank, man. Oh, yeah? Yes. On the bank? Well, when mm. you get to your peg? When I get to my peg. So not when you get up in the morning? Nope. Mix. Right, okay. And it's what I do, and I just... First thing I do, get to my peg. Yep. Think of what I'm going to do. I'll have a plumb around, find out what depth I'm going to go in. Yeah. And it might change how much water, how little water I put in. Yeah. Uh, but I do put quite a bit of water in, because I... And I get my ground bait out. There might be an hour and three quarts before the match. Yeah. I mix it. It's normally um, three parts of ground bait to yeah. one part of water in one mix. Okay. It does mix up quite sl like a slurry, like a slop. This, these are sauna bait mixers. Yeah, aren't these they? are so pellet based mixers. Not other, other brands, other mixers might be different. Yeah, with uh, these just uh, just this. This is what I my go to mixers do that mm -hmm. three to one. And it goes in and it looks horrible. And I mix yep. it and it goes to a slop. And yep. when it goes like that, I can't use a whisk because I've got to hand mix it because it goes to like a paste. Yep. But then I'm looking at it all the time for that hour and three quarts. I'm checking it, I'm feeling it, I'm squeezing it. Yep. I'm looking if it needs water. And then when I feel it doesn't need any more water, that's when I sieve it. Push it all through my sieve yep. and put it in one of my containers, zip it up, sealed, and then I take a bit out at a time. Got you, got you. Simple. And yeah, it might need a bit more water in match, might need a little bit more drying out, so I'll leave my lid off, my little tub what I'm yep. making and Right. Right then, final note. We are heading over to France, we'll be there in a few minutes, and we know that non fish meal mixers. Mm. We might even end up we are you know, we the lads might end up using non fish meal mixers this week or next week. We don't know, obviously till we start training and stuff, but um how often are you using non fish meal mixers in England now? Very rare. When, when would you use one, if so, ever? So, there's places like your reservoirs and that. Natural reservoirs. Yeah, yeah, natural reservoirs, but mainly they either get carp fished or fish with pellets and fish with methods. So the fish only ever see fish meals now in ground right. so there's, there's not many places where my go-to is gonna be non-fish meal. The river. River Trent. Yes, if you want, but 90% of them fish are gonna <laughs> like fish meal, you know? Um, maybe for catching some perch and Maybe put some soil or some <coughs> yeah, it's... cereal, but that's spe not specialist fishing, but it's when you're just targeting one species. Yeah. But there's not many venues in England where I'm going to go thinking it's, this is non-fish meal, they don't like yeah, it. Yeah, it's strange just... how it's changed, hasn't mm. it? I mean, that small period of time, nine years or whatever it is, I've been back involved in fishing and stuff. And even back then, when the first Feeder Masters qualified, yeah. uh, sorry, first Feeder Masters finals were at Bow Beach. Even back then, I was double. I don't know about you, but mm. I, was, I was double mixing. Yes. And some of the big name anglers were double mixing. They'd have a, a non fish meal mix for a short line for roach, and, but then they'd have a, a bream line. Yeah. Was... But whereas now, it's kind of one mix. Local does... reservoir towards Dan Flask. Yep. Prime example. It sees, it doesn't get fished very often now because everyone goes carp fishing and yep. wants to park behind the peg. They don't want to walk in, they don't want to get snagged, they don't want to have yeah, to find yeah. fish. You can go to a peg that has not been fished for 10 months. Yep. First cast out with fish meal mix, it goes round and you catch a skimmer. And you think, well, it, they haven't seen any pellets and they haven't seen any ground bait and they haven't seen carp lads, they've seen nobody. Yeah, there's definitely something in it mm. as regards why it, it works, but it's made it simpler for yeah. a lot of our fishing now because we can use one mix. Um, just on the mention, now Richard just mentioned Dam Flask Reservoir. Lots of you have seen some of my videos um, on that venue. Lovely venue, isn't it? Yeah. We, we, we were on we there as kids. We, kids. We I can fish. walk to it from my house. If we, yeah, we used to fish junior matches on there. Um, just to let you know, there are, there are they've started running one or two matches on there. Wayne Bartholomew was running some matches. The next one is the 16th of October, 
and then the next one I think is the 30th of October. So if you are on Facebook, there is a Facebook page, Dan Flask Match yeah, Group, is something it? Yeah, like that, I think Dan, 30th. Dan Flask Reservoir Match Group, that's the name of the yeah. page. If you check that out. The 30th so, is Autumn Sweepstake, I think it's called. That's, that's it. it, Autumn Sweeps. There are places. Nine Champs and the Autumn Sweepstake were the two to um, yeah. win, if you know what I mean. The yeah, two it's, to a, get in. it's a lovely natural, it's fishing brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's fishing really, really well. So if anyone's interested in that, just head on over to Facebook to that um, that page and you can, they are open matches, 16th and 30th of October. But, um, but yeah, thanks for that, Rich. No worries. Like I said, we're going to be in France shortly. So what we're going to be doing is, um, or I'm certainly going to be doing, um, hopefully with Rich as well and some of the other lads, just updating. We're not actually dancing now or anything. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the yeah. train that's uh, that's obviously moving. Um, we're under a large amount of water at the minute. <laughs> we are, yes. Um, we're going to be updating you throughout uh, the weekend, uh, particularly, and into next week, which is training week. Um, we've got a busy weekend, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, busy. Some long, long days, but we are going to be up uploading, um, certainly onto this channel, Fishing Life. So give it a subscribe if you want to see how we're getting through the World Champs. Um, and, yeah, it's going to be an interesting week. Yeah. All the lads Interesting are... week, interesting venue. Very, very. So if you want to see how it's going to happen, basically we're on our way through now. Um, some of the lads are already there now. Uh, this train, there was over capacity. They couldn't get us on. So uh, they're slightly ahead of us. So we're going to head up, up to the digs in Belgium. What is it, about three hours, 20 yeah. minutes from Calais to uh, to the digs. So yeah, we're going to head up there now, get settled in. Thanks for all the great messages. I really, really appreciate it. We're going to be uploading you, uh, uploading you some updates through this week. So thanks for that, mate. No worries. But we've got lots of energy, mate. It's been yeah. a busy week. Pit stop at tackle shop first. Yes, yeah, we are. Yeah, oh. a total different tackle shop than we're normally used to. Yeah, all the things we've just been saying about ground baits and stuff yeah. are completely upside Might down. Might not even see a fish meal ground bait or, or one aisle maybe of the <laughs> twenty aisles of ground yeah, bait yeah. And, and wafters and pellets. Yeah, <laughs> they are so, big river floats, flat floats, pencil yeah, floats. Yeah, in fact, I'll do some filming there for you. I'm sure they'll let me film there for you, so I'll put a little bit of a video together there for you, which I'll upload onto this channel for you. Okay, so thanks for all the great messages. Thanks for that, mate. We're yeah. going to hit the ground running once we get to Calais, and uh, we're going to be uploading the next update for you. So hit subscribe, give this one a like if you want to see more, and we'll see you tomorrow.